So what I showed could be done under just plain configuration. You can enable a DNG or an RQM or a DM project uh, for configuration, which says, gives me the, give me the ability uh, for that application to do streams, to do baselines, to have change sets. Uh, that's configuration. But remember way up front, we said each component has its own set of streams. Global configuration is a higher level stream and you have the ability to name those streams anything you want. Uh, but what a global configuration stream says is I consist of stream from each of the requirements across my entire product line. So I may have two components in DNG, one for the body of the tractor, one for the engine of the tractor. Uh, each has its own stream. Notice there's only one version of engines. So whether I'm on my farm tractor, my lawn tractor, my classic tractor, my modern tractor, I have different streams for the different requirements for that, but the engine isn't changing. Uh, that's how we set this up. Uh, so the global configuration for my farm tractor has the body for the farm. It has the one engine configuration. Uh, it has a source code configuration and it has an RQM or test configuration specific to farm. The global configuration lets me say, uh, I'm obviously doing my global farm tractor configuration here, says these requirements, these streams from these components, this source, and this set of versioned tests that are specific to my farm as well. So the global configuration uh, is necessary, absolutely necessary, if you want to link requirements to test configurations. If you did just a single DNG configuration of a project, it doesn't know what versions of tests it should talk to. So you'd first do those local configurations to separate out different versions of just the requirements. Then you create global configuration to link them all together and a user can just set the global configuration, which then sets the local, correct local configuration and right components for that product across the entire life cycle. Well, that is important to understand. Most sites will use global configuration, and it's a second level of stream above those local configurations, and somebody is going to be the master of configurations setting up the local streams, setting up the global streams, setting up the components, creating new streams or baselines as necessary. Right? Someone's going to keep track of that entire structure uh, and where changes are flowing from and to to make sure baselines and streams are created correctly. Uh, so again, uh, global configuration is uh, like the second half of turning on configuration. First you turn on local configuration and then global configuration across your local configurations. Uh, and that would have then allow links to be drawn from one application to another. Uh, and the global stream will set all of the appropriate local streams. Um, here you can see I have a global configuration uh, and we looked at that panel a couple of times. Um, yeah, I'll get that out of the way. Uh, when I was switching back and forth between change sets and streams, if I have a global configuration set, I can expand it to see what are all of the local streams that are under that umbrella. And for each one of them, what application and in fact, what uh, component is being gathered by that global stream. 